Agents, will you be in business next year? The shocking truth revealed. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> so today's podcast, we're going to be going through a lot of the mistakes that we see agents making right now that are easily avoided for the sake of basically staying not just relevant, but becoming more successful than ever. So yes, indeed, you're in business next year and all the years that go after that. So Julie, was there anything specific that motivated you to uh, write this podcast? Sure. Well, there's a lot of chatter out there with everybody predicting that the number of licensed real estate professionals is going to decline. Now, some people say precipitously decline and other people are like, well, you know, it's kind of an ebb and a flow that happens every year. But why is this a headline these days? Well, First reason is the commission lawsuits will separate the skilled from the unskilled since the buyer side of the transaction now requires a presentation, objection handling, and a signed agreement. You know, more skill. Also, higher mortgage rates are causing some buyers to put the purchase on the back burners. That slows down some sales. Inventory is improving, but still scarce in certain areas. And of course, inflation continues to drive prices up. So all of this put into the same bucket, especially the commission lawsuit thing, means that agents are going to have to have their act together at a higher level. All these facts are true, but it's also true that you have a real estate license and you need to earn a living. So let's pivot to see why you can still survive and thrive. So it's not the commission sharing lawsuit that you're referring to. It's the fact that agents are going to have to learn how to present their value yes. to buyers and all the rest of it. But As I'm, a result, I'm yeah. going to go full circle on this. And this is just my opinion. Sure. Right. And I'm not an expert about this stuff. Mm -hmm. But personally, I don't think there's going to be any real difference in the way real estate is done even post commission sharing lawsuit. This is just my opinion because they, the industry is going to adapt really fast. And because at the end of the day, people want to use buyer's agents. And mm -hmm. even, I'll go, I'll add this to it as well. According to that NAR study that came out a couple months ago, half of all agents don't do a single deal per year. True. And then I forget what percent you'll remember. I'm sure that do fewer than five deals per year. That's another big chunk. Yeah. Right. So uh, most of the business is mm -hmm. actually done by agents selling the fewest number of homes in mm -hmm. strictly by numbers. I think they're going to adapt. And I think the whole industry will adapt. I just don't think there's any going to be any sort of real, you know, change. And I'm going to add this in it, into it as well. Sure. Since you started out by talking about some of these morons that are predicting a big drop off in the number of agents, mm -hmm. that doesn't even make even the remotest amount of sense to me. And I'll and I'll tell you, Julie and I, when uh, three years ago, we were at this big meeting, and you know, everyone was predicting that you know agents, there's going to be an agent apocalypse, and half all the agents were going to leave. And, you know, they were just assuming because it was COVID and because all these other things that they just, you know, were throwing spitballs up to the wall, basically. And Julie and I, prior to the meeting, had actually done research and we wanted to go back into time and find out when, you know, there were similar, um, not the same, but similar things that happened to the economy, wars even, what had happened to the total number of real estate agents in the country, in recessions in the past, what had happened. And guess what we discovered? that not only does the number of agents not drop off precipitously uh, during hard times or harder times, it often increases. Now look, we, we, there was a job, jobs report that came out um, recently and it was talking about the fact that there's a record number of employment. Like everyone's got a job that wants a job. Well, you go and you dig into those numbers and what are they? Part-time jobs, something like, I forget what percent it was of the you know jobs that were formed were part-time jobs. Well, guess what? A lot of the people that got real estate licenses that are, you know, selling, uh, you know, making money as part time agents, they're not those those aren't technically jobs because they're self-employed. That's true. Right. So you're going to see a lot during hard times. You see a lot of people get second and third jobs, but you also see a lot of people get into the real estate business. And we've mm -hmm. seen this happen. Julie and I have been through this is the fourth I, though I would say most significant uh, cycle change that we've e experienced. I think this ultimately will be remembered as more significant than even the real estate uh, thing because the real estate yeah. crash had sort of a beginning and an end, right? That's true. I mean, it was kind of definable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it lasted really effectively through 2009, started really late, late 2006. So, mm -hmm. you know, manageable, but you can see where the, mar where the market's going based on stats and all the rest of it. But this time around, there's so many more variables. Uh, but yeah, ultimately what's going to happen is the number of agents over time is going to increase with the, the uh, population of the United States. And that's another theory that we have that we haven't actually tested yet. But we think that the number of agents, number of people with real estate licenses as a percent has been relatively consistent with the total population of the United States. And as the population of the United States grows, guess what's going to happen? So for those of you who are, you know, thinking there's going to be some sort of big drop off in the number of agents, we 100% disagree with you. And we are uh, objective. So if you have any 
um, countervailing facts that would prove us wrong, let's have a conversation. I'd love to know. Yes, I've very well said. And I think maybe we should rename this. Are you not just going to be, quote, in real estate, meaning you're licensed, but are you personally going to be transactional next year? I think that would be more accurate because there are a lot of people. I was just thinking as you were talking, I was thinking about all of the people that we just know in our own sphere that real estate is definitely not their main thing. They happen to be licensed. Maybe they do a flip now and then. Maybe they do it for their own purchases. You know, it's like half the people you know probably have a license or are getting licensed. And to your point about the pandemic, I think to my private coaching clients, my elite one-on-one -on -one clients, what was happening during that that time, many of them were having their kids get licensed. Yep. And then other people we would talk to because everybody was locked up. It was pretty easy to get licensed online. The only thing you had to wait for was the test. Well, look at our coaching business, right? We're <laughs> mm -hmm. seeing a lot of people that are uh, becoming real estate agents that are, it's really two big cycles, two mm -hmm. big groups. You have the downsize, you have baby boomers or, you know, people, military people. You have uh, sure. retiring police. You have people that are retiring from normal jobs. You have mm -hmm. people that are sort of at the end of their first, you know, 30 or 40 years at work. And now they're going to supplement their retirement income yep. and get real estate licenses. We're seeing a lot of those folks that are joining at Premier Coaching. Um, and then you're seeing a lot of millennials. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing that's very fascinating to me. When you and I got into the business, um, there was a perception that real estate agents were pretty much the bottom of the barrel. But there's this whole generation of millennials that have it's grown more prestigious. up. prestigious. Yeah, exactly. It's mm -hmm. prestigious. Not yeah. only that, it's aspirational. Oh my gosh, you're going to be like a Bravo TV star. So you have these big, huge generational things that are, you know, you cannot discount the power of those two big surges. In the, and then the millennials making babies and then, move, I mean, really guys, there has never been a better time to be in real estate because of all the you know, fact, the generational shifts that are happening, the you know demographic things that are happening interest rates, politics, all the rest of the doom and gloom aside, you're in the right place at the right time. That's right. So what should you do now to ensure you're, that you survive and thrive? Will you still be in business and transactional next year or will you be real estate roadkill? Well, point number one, uh, before we get to our points, how can they get the notes? Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, I'll do it real quick. HarrisRealEstateDaily.com. HarrisRealEstateDaily.com. We're putting all of our show notes and a heck of a lot more in that newsletter, harrisrealestatedaily.com. So please just go ahead and subscribe. It takes like two seconds. All you have to do is drop in your email address and then you do have to confirm in your email. Or it'll email you a double confirmation, you know, and a double opt-in. You have to agree and click it and then you're off to the races. You can get all of our show notes, a lot of additional material we're making just for Harris Real Estate Daily subscribers. And guess what? It doesn't cost you anything. So do not delay. All right, so what should you be doing now? If you get stuck on any of these points, we are here to help you. That's certainly something we elaborate upon in all of our coaching levels. So point number one, get and follow, even more important than getting in the first place, get and follow an actual business plan immediately. Premier Coaching includes the real estate treasure map, the survival plan, even a 90-day massive action plan. You're going to have specific goals, an actual schedule, and lead generation plan to follow. All right, point number two, stop spending money on things that don't work. And this is really a major point. So how do you know what you should be spending money on? You need to have a set of rules. I'm gonna tell you what the rules are. If this thing that you're thinking about doing will not result in a closing with a paycheck in the next 90 days or less, don't do it. That would be my strongest advice to all of you listening. So many of you have been talked into doing things that were basically, it's gambling. And I'm, yes, I'm talking to you, marketing, branding, go, you know, all the things, right? That you guys are 100%, um, you know, sp you spend so much money, billions of dollars per year on trying to build your brand. All these, you know, activities that are supposed to one day result in a real estate transaction. I will strongly suggest to you, you stop or at least sideline all of those, all of those activities until you, uh, in, until they can actually prove that they'll generate a closable transaction for you in the next 90 days or less. If you cannot 100% verify that something you're spending money on right now, uh, if you cannot, if it cannot prove to you, and when someone's calling you up to try to sell you something, you need to say, my rule is I do not buy, subscribe, or whatever, anything that will not, that has not uh, have the ability to result in a closed uh, transaction within the next 90 days or less. And if they can't prove it to you, don't do it. 
Very well said. That That's a very simple filter that everybody can follow. Well, then it makes it so that you can run and hide from all the people that are trying to sell you BS because what's going to happen is six months or 12 months from now, and all of you guys have been in the business for a long time. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Six months or 12 months from now, when the thing's not working, you're still going to be paying for it in the hopes and prayer, praying that it's going to actually start you know, reduce or producing transactions all the while, you know, you've wasted how much money at that point and time you call up, right. And right. Call up the company. You say, well, it isn't working. And they're saying, well, you just need to do it for longer. Have you guys heard this before? Or you need to upgrade. Right. So the best time to, you know, there's a, an old saying that when the going gets tough, the smart leave, I know that's kind of counterintuitive, but when you're doing something that's not working, um, and it's, you basically have validated that maybe you made a mistake doing it in the first place. Stop doing it because you're going in the wrong direction. Should be very obvious. And it would mean that you're smart making that decision. All right. Point number three, speak to 100% of your database before the end of the year. Now I would say before the end of the year, if you have a big database, some of you, depending on how many you have and your, your stamina on the phone, you should be able to talk to everybody every quarter. If you're doing at least five contacts per day on work days, more is better. Some of you are doing five or 10. I'm sorry, 10 or more. Use your Ford, <clears throat> excuse me, Ford script, that's family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, to ask who they know who could use your help buying or selling real estate. Offer a free comparative market analysis, for example. I had a coaching client last week, Tim, first call to our database, first lead. They said, yes, I would actually like to buy more in her town. They were an investor. They want to buy two more houses. Well, so here's some, uh, Julie, check me on my facts, but something after five years, something like 75% of the average agent's business comes from their centers of influence and past clients. But you got to make it to that point. And you have to actually talk to them. You can't just have the database. So my suggestion, Julie was saying, you know, as far as frequency, take your database, divide it by the number of work days every month and call those people every single month. A quick to the point conversation. We give you the scripts in Premier Coaching. But the gist of it is, is you're calling them, giving them an update on what their home's value is. Every one of them is going to want to talk to you because every single month you're calling them and tell them their house is appreciated in value because of inflation. There will be a total of zero people that will not look forward to your call. It might be the best thing to happen to them that day when you're calling up to tell them how smart they are that you know they bought the house when they did because now they are in this position versus you know not having bought it and where they would be something like that you guys get it and then in every single call with by the way who do you know who's thinking about buying or selling real estate that i should be helping and they will eventually after you've shown your consistency of uh, calling them and you know bringing the good news to them about their home's value when you've done that a couple months in a row they will start bringing leads to you now, what is this is going to require? This requires a, a very minimal amount of skill. It requires, we're not suggesting you do really comprehensive CMAs on every single one of their you know, houses before you call them. You can just do a big, broad CMA from the you know, whole MOS market study. Make sure after you give them the, you know, guess what? Real estate in your market's appreciated by, you know, this much. And they'll give them dollar amounts too. Percents don't mean much to anybody. But say your home has increased in value by approximately $15,000 in the last 30 days. So congratulations. Would you like me to do more in-depth study of your home's value in this market? And, you know, yes, no, maybe so, whatever they say. And then follow, follow their instructions accordingly. But make sure you end the call saying, oh, by the way, um, who do you know? You know, or even better, by the way, who are the two or three people, you know, who are thinking about buying, selling real estate in this market that I should be helping? Ask those questions. You'll be shocked how frequently you start generating referral fee free yeah. transactions. And we know you'll be shocked because you come to your daily coaching sessions starting out with this sentence. You're not going to believe what just happened when I talked that's to five of my past clients. OK, make sure that's you. Point number four, systematize your open house system and have effective opens every weekend that's not a holiday weekend between now and the end of the quarter or the end of the year. You can schedule them out. Follow up immediately with all prospects. Keep in mind, Wayne Gretzky famously said he skates to where the puck will be. So go to where the buyers are in today's market. Everybody is starved for inventory. It's improving, but we're still starved for inventory. Buyers go to open houses in the neighborhoods they want to live in. So go where the buyers are. So I have to interject here. So yes. buyer, generally speaking, generally speaking, the least motivated, lowest quality buyer leads are the internet buyer leads that you guys are paying the most money for, right? So how does the process work? When somebody is thinking about buying real estate, they start out on the internet. Then they sort of start whittling themselves down to where they want a price point, maybe different communities. And then they're now, maybe then they've talked to a lender, right? Whatever their process is. And then they come in contact with real estate agents. That's usually how it works. It, it, you, they come in contact with real estate agents that they end up using, I should say. 
If you're trying to buy buyer leads from Zillow or whoever at the top of their process, at the top of the funnel, when they're the least motivated, that's the reason the quality of those leads are so bad because you're going after the least the least motivated buyers. You guys understand? Um, now, why are the buyers that are going to open houses the best? Because after they've decided, the community, not just the, you know, Columbus, Ohio, but they've actually chosen the, the 10 streets or the actual subdivision they want to live in. They know that new listings come for sale every weekend that aren't necessarily in the MLS, or there are new listings that come for sale. Maybe it's a coming soon or whatever. They're going to be driving the neighborhoods that they actually want to live in. That's the reason you do open houses because you're going to get the best buyers. And there was another NAR study that uh, showed that buyers will work with the first agent that they meet, not the first agent that emails them, not the first agent that basically follows up with them because they you know, filled out a buyer lead form. The first agent that they meet and when you're meeting them in the neighborhood in which they want to buy a house, you guys get how that's going to result in a relatively easy transaction. Now, depending on the price point, those buyers might also have homes to sell. You're also going to meet the neighbors. So absolutely positively do open houses in a market like this. It always, Opens always work, but they work now more than ever because of the fact that the buying buyer lead, online lead generation stuff is so saturated. And also because of low inventory, right? Yeah. And, and I would add a third factor, which I was thinking of as you were talking, you know, with this whole year after year of low inventory, the habit of listing agents has become listed, in, you know, stick it in the MLS on Wednesday or Thursday, hold a, a neighbor's open on Friday, hold a regular open on Saturday and be in contract by Monday. Buyers know that all the inventory hits for the weekend. That's why open houses are slammed these days. Yep. So take advantage of that. All right. Number five, spend more time speaking to prospects about real estate than you do doom scrolling for details about the commission lawsuits, about politics, the election, whatever you're doom scrolling about. Step away from that and pick up the phone to talk about real estate. Really, to summarize, just be media free. That's just the, that's easier. Just be media free. <laughs> Point number six. Number six, polish. Here it comes. Your buyer presentation immediately. Not having a signed buyer agreement is no longer going to be optional. You must be able to confidently present what your value is as a buyer's agent. The only way to do that is with a formal presentation. And we've done several podcasts on this. And by the way, in Premier Coaching, when you join Premier Coaching for free, and you know, it's simple, just go to premiercoaching.com or scroll down below and click the link. In Premier Coaching, we do have a very robust buyer agency section. It's all about what Julie's about to share with you. It's very similar to our seven-step listing process. Well, guess what? We also have a similar, I think it's a five-step buyer process that includes the presentation, that includes all the things, the scripts, the objection handlers, all the things that you must master in order to essentially, uh, you know, I, what would be the word? <laughs> Um, Secure. Follow the new rules that look yeah. like they're going to be Well, to be compliant, you're to right. To be compliant, yeah. yeah. So they're all going to be there in Premier Coaching, and we're going to make it so that you're going to have a compelling presentation that will result in the buyer wanting to sign an exclusive buyer agency contract with you. And uh, yeah, that's not something you can delay because it does indeed look like that's going to be the law of the land sooner than later. That's right. And what is in the presentation? Remember that closing for a signature is easy when you've had a great presentation. I'm just going to go through this quickly because we do this in coaching. What goes in a buyer presentation? Of course, you're going to discuss agency. You're going to talk about expectations. What are they looking for? And is it realistic? Will they have to pay the full list price based on what they're looking for in your market? Are they likely to have to compete? Are they looking for new construction? This is the getting to know your client part. Then you'll be talking about financing options, what you expect from the buyer and what they can expect from you, how the buying process actually works, strategies for buying and selling at the same time, and of course, how you are paid. Additionally, if they're going to need some seller's concessions, that's just a little bit of an overview of what we do with the buyer presentation. And you're going to include a buyer's net sheet and obviously the exclusive buyer's agency contract. But this is all done for you and we're updating all this information. Um, frankly, EXP has done a fantastic job yes. of really updating all their buyer. That. Yeah, isn't it great? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to be actually including, um, you know, we're just going to be putting in the uh, buyer agency section of Premier Coaching a lot of the uh, EXP content that they're creating. It's designed to be used by everyone, so we're going to share it with you there. And you can use it whether you're an EXP agent or not. But if you're not an EXP agent at this point, what the heck are you waiting for? One of the best business decisions Julie and I made in the last five years was certainly to join with EXP Realty. Uh, we have a group that's close to 4,000 agents now that are have aligned with us, partnered with us at EXP Realty. 
We would be honored if you would consider Julie and I your sponsors of eXp Realty. There are a lot of reasons why, but the bigger, the biggest reason why is because eXp is going to be, without a doubt, the big winner as far as brokerages as a result of all these changes, and it should be clear to all of you. It's the reason so many individual agents, new agents, experienced agents, teams, and brokers are all moving over to eXp. Let's have the conversation. The easiest path for you to follow is just to text me directly at 512-758-0206. 512-758-0206. Or if you'd like, uh, when you scroll down, in, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on iTunes, doesn't matter where, there is a link that will uh, explain to you all the benefits that you have of aligning with Julie and I at eXp Realty, all the things you get aligned with us in addition to all the things that eXp offers. So it's all down below. If you click the link, it says it's the Y Libertas link. So click that link, learn more about Julie and I's group. And yeah, we'd love to have you as a partner at eXp Realty. It would certainly be our pleasure and our honor uh, to be with you in your sojourn as you become more successful as a real estate agent. And if you're ready to land the plane, ready to choose a sponsor, and you've not chosen someone already be your sponsor at eXp, please do consider Julie and I at 512-758-0206. That is my real text. Uh, do not call. Please do text. I will not answer, but I will respond personally to all texts. So there you go. 512-758-0206. All right. Point number seven, set specific goals for the next 90 days. The real estate treasure map and your coaches will help you with this. You can also use the 90 day massive action plan. For example, exactly how much money must you earn in the next 90 days compared to how much you have coming in. Divide by your average commission and you'll know how many deals you need. Are you on track ahead or behind and by how much? Now, if you're ahead of your goals, fantastic, but it's time to set new goals for next quarter and be specific. We did a podcast on goal setting. Goals have to be what we call SMART, S-M-A-R-T, stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Post your new goals where you can see them daily. And we'll, again, we have podcasts about that as a 30,000 foot level. And then, of course, the treasure map will get you the rest of the way. This is the, our podcast, and you guys love it. It's just basically a sampler of what the drill down you get in Premier Coaching. There's exactly. no comparison, really. There isn't. Uh, there's only so much we can do on a podcast. And right. I always feel like we're fire hosing that. But okay, number eight, get the help you need by joining Premier Coaching. Our caring, competent, skilled, and experienced coaches are waiting for you to help you achieve your goals faster. So in conclusion, ask yourself, based on these eight points, and there's more, but this is a shorter podcast, okay? Not coaching. Will you still be in real estate? Will you be transactional a year from now? Focus, F-O-C-U-S, means follow one course until successful. You might say follow our coaching until successful. That works with that word as well. So follow the plan. Oh, Julie, that was clever. Thank I didn't you. see that one coming. Yes, <laughs> so trying that out on you. Just go to premiercoaching.com. Uh, you did just try that on me. I saw you smiling to see if yeah. I'd catch it. Nice job. Mm -hmm. Or I'll scroll down below and click the link to join Premier Coaching. In the meantime, thank you for keeping this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents. Um, in at least the United States, is our pleasure and our honor. You, uh, you guys, because of the podcast, because of coaching and all the other things um, that we participate in, are allowing Julie and I to be in alignment with our highest and truest purpose, professionally speaking, of course, which is to be of service to all of you. Thank you for keeping this the number one listed to daily podcast for real estate agents in at least the United States. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow.